good morning to our eminent speaker, Dr. Dave Chatterjee, guests, Deputy Secretary General, Mr. N. Banerjee, our principal, Ms. Nen, coordinators, teachers, and students. Today, a very interesting and informative workshop on cybersecurity and digitization trends is in store for all of us, but first we will have our principal, Ms. Nen, welcoming Dr. Chatterjee with a bouquet and a book specially published on the school's completion of 75 years. And I now request Ms. Nen to speak a few words of welcome to Dr. Chatterjee. to Dr. Dave Chatterjee from the University of Georgia. He wrote a letter, an email to me a few days ago saying that he was very interested in giving a talk on cyber security to our boys. And I said to myself, it's very difficult to get excellent resource people who will be sharing so much with our boys and I invited him to our school. And at the same time, we are very proud that Dr. Chatterjee has brought along with him his mother who stays in Kolkata and also his son who studies in the States. He is an alumnus of the school, so we are very proud. We hope some of you will do as well as him. Please give him a big hand. I believe he is from the 1982 batch, the same year in which Mr. Satyajit Malik, our senior maths teacher, was also a student of Billa High School in the same year, and they have studied together. We are indeed really honored that you have decided to visit uh, your old school and address the boys here. And I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful experience for all of us. We've had talks on cybersecurity earlier, but I'm sure this is going to be something out of the world. The only thing I would like Dr. Dave Chatterjee to remember is that he is teaching postgraduate students and addressing people who are far maturer than these boys. These boys are from class 8, from 11 and 9, I think. So uh, we would be grateful if you could come down a little bit to their level so that they can understand whatever you are saying. I most heartily also welcome uh, Assistant Secretary General, Deputy Secretary General, Mr. N. Banerjee, who has come specially for this talk. And I hope all of you will have a good interactive session with him where you can ask questions and he will answer. All the best. Thank you very much. I think without much ado, would you like to begin now? Thank you. Stage. Dr. Chatterjee is an associate professor in the MIS department at the Terry College of Business University of Georgia. An accomplished scholar and technology thought leader, his interest and expertise lie in the various facets of technology management, some areas being data governance, internal controls, and information security. His work has found a place in many a prestigious outlet. To name a few, we have the Wall Street Journal, California Management Review, Journal of Management Information System. In addition to this, he is a noted speaker delivering talks around the world, moderating panel discussions, providing consulting and advisory services, and offering white papers. He has been recognized as a world-renowned cyber security and change management expert for leading Fortune 500 companies. 
a leading IT educator who has taught at our levels. He has provided leadership and guidance to several important university and college governance committees. His passion to promote the development of the youth has driven him here to address you all. Most importantly, he is a product of our institution, erstwhile Hindi High School, and a living example of a man whose passion, dedication, and determination had helped him to reach where he is today. Dr. Chatterjee, please. Well, thank you very, very much. Uh, very kind introductions. I'm delighted to be here. Students, when I look at you, I'm thinking myself in your shoes many, many years ago. So don't be surprised that someday you might be here doing what I'm doing. But I must tell you, I'm absolutely excited to see you. So are we going to have some fun this morning? Yeah? Yeah, 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 okay. All right, all right, okay. We're gonna have a real interactive session and I'm gonna reach out to you. If you have anything to say, you can stand up and say, if you have any comments. So we're gonna have a lot of fun while we will learn. Make sense? Good? All right, fantastic. So, this morning, as, as the Bible suggests, the focus is really your journey. And I want to share with you what I have learned from my journey. And once again, as your principal said, I reached out to her, seeking an opportunity to talk to you all, and very kindly and very graciously, she was so prompt, and she has arranged for this Fantastic opportunity for this man, thank you so much. So I'll give you a brief overview of my journey. And as I talk through this, I see some of you have pens and papers and pads. I want you to start writing down what are some things that you will take away home tonight. And towards the end, I might ask you to share with us what were those takeaways. So that sound okay? You want to take a few notes? You got a sheet of paper or something? Okay. I'll also talk about the technocentric reality that we are in. We'll talk about different fun technologies, what awaits you as you grow up and you yourself do these great things. Then we'll talk about challenges and that's where I'll talk about cybersecurity. And finally I'll conclude with some recommendations and suggestions. Does that plan sound good? And I promise I will try to make it as lively and as interactive as possible because I know how it is when you're sitting there. So my journey began in 1975 and you're wondering, wow, this guy is ancient. Really ancient. So from 1975 to 1982 I was here then as one of, your, uh, one of the early speakers said, it was known as Hindi High School. And I, I was here from the 6th grade to the 12th grade. Many, many memories. But guess what are the ones I want to talk about? The first one. I love going to the Maidan on Saturdays for cricket. Do you ever go to the Maidan on Saturdays for cricket? It's changed? The schedules have changed? Okay. Means Friday night I was excited. I, was, I would get my cricketing gear together. And, and Saturday I would never miss school. Never. Because... We barely came to school, got on the school bus, and we were shipped to the Victoria Memorial Maidan area, and then we, we had the whole morning and early afternoon to play. So that was my favorite day. How many of you like to play? Oh, fantastic. Keep playing. Go and tell your parents, your speaker said, to play more. It's a good thing. And by the way, I used to be a pretty good ping pong player, pretty good. I in fact uh, was the captain of the school team uh, and we were at the Patterson Memorial Tournament and I was, when I was Googling for the, preparing for the talk, uh, I found that that the tournament still exists 
and uh, represented the, uh, the school, and we were the indoor stadium. So I have some great, great memories. And we used to also have uh, the school tournament in your, you also have that uh, skating ring there? The, 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 the assembly, right? Okay. So we, we, had, we had tournaments there as well. Now, there's a secret that I was not wanting to share. I wasn't sure I should share or not. What do you think? Should I share? Okay. So, here we're going to have an elocution contest. I think I was an eighth grader. And we had this gentleman, Mr. R.D. Sinha. He was to organize, you know, he would guide us in elocutions and debates. And he thought very well of me. He thought I was a good speaker. So, when my turn came, and this everybody was here, when my turn came to come and give a talk, and it was on Brutus, Brutus' speech, he told his audience that, now, you're going to hear someone who's really good at this. So listen to him carefully. So he gave me this excellent introduction. I come on stage, I get started, but by the way, I couldn't refer to any script. I had to remember everything. And after a couple of paragraphs, I forgot. How embarrassing does that get? And I was dreading it. I was dreading it. It happened. And I got nervous, and I got still, and I just stood, and I stood. And guess what happens when that happens to you? What do the audiences do? They start clapping. Okay, your time's up. You can go now. I haven't forgotten that. Let's hope that doesn't happen today. Let's hope. But, but, you know, I have many, many more years of experience now, so hopefully I can work around it. So how are we doing so far? Am I okay? Are you following me? Yeah. Everybody? Yeah. Now, none of this is possible. Would have been possible without our anchors, our, our people who support us to do what we do. Before coming here, I was going through your website. And I absolutely love reading about all the wonderful things um, people have written there, drawing great analogies. And I love the analogy of the banyan tree. And it reminded me of my banyan tree, the anchors that have helped me get to where I am today. So first and foremost, I want to recognize my grandfather. Now, by the way, I was, that picture is way old, and I was that, that was my buddy. He was my everything. And as I look around and as I reflect on my times here, the person I remember the most is my grandfather who was a professor. Um, and he's no more, but I'm sure he's, he's, um, he's watching over us. And I want to take this opportunity of again thanking him. My grandmother at home was always there and with a lot of love and care they raised me. And uh, I'm eternally grateful to them. I'm also very grateful to my parents. My mother is here. I'm uh, delighted that she could attend. My dad doesn't keep too well, so he stayed home. But they have been a rock in my life. And uh, I couldn't ask for better grandparents or better parents. So I have a request of all of you. You're gonna keep that request? Yeah? When you go back home tonight, you walk up to whoever supports you to come to school, pays for the tuition or whatever, and say a big thank you, give them a big hug, and tell them, I'm going to make it all worth it. Does that sound like, sound like okay? Your parents are like, what happened to you today? What happened? What are you trying to get? Just say, you know, we had a speaker. He asked us to go come and thank you. But nothing happens in life. Nothing good happens unless you recognize from where you come who supported you. And along the same way, I want to thank the many, many wonderful teachers I've had in this school. Wonderful. Um, I could re remember some names. The first name that I want to men mention is my history teacher, 8th grade, Mrs. Maiti. I will never forget how nice she was. How kind, how sweet she was. We used to go in the same bus back home. And one, one weekend, she invited me over for lunch. And she prepared food, several items, and she literally fed me. I've never forgotten that. Never. They are who make you who you will be tomorrow. Is that, does that gel with you? Do you agree? 
Are teachers important? Yes. Yes. Teachers are very important. So I started off as a science student. I went through class 12 as science, but then I switched. I went into business, into commerce. Did my bachelor's, got my MBA, got my PhD. So in life, situations will change. You could start off in science, go into commerce, go into different fields, go into humanities. Uh, no problem. As long as you're pursuing excellence, it's all, all good. So what do I do for a living? Can, can anyone tell me what I do for a living? I'm a professor. What do professors do? <laughs> professors lecture. I hate that word lecture. You know why? Lately, I've been traveling pretty much around the world. I go to companies. I don't know if you have heard of any of these companies. These are pretty well-known companies in the software industry, Salesforce. Uh, then I was in Dublin, Ireland, giving a talk at the Cyber Warfare and Security Conference. Um, was in Rome, Italy, um, giving a talk. Um, then I was uh, you know, giving a talk at the CDC University in Atlanta. So then tomorrow I go to the IIM uh, Joga, and on Thursday I speak at my college. But guess which is the favorite place? Right here, high school. And you know what, when I shared with my colleagues, with my network, that I was going to go to my high school to give a talk on LinkedIn, I had over 5,000, 6,000 people liking it. And that tells you how, um, and I love to talk to youngsters. This is not the first time I'm talking to 8th, ninth, 10th graders. I do it all the time. By the way, I have a rising or a rising um, freshman. He's a 12th grader, my son. Uh, so and I engage with him and his friends. So I love interacting with you. I love to take your questions. You are the future. So it's very important that we speak to you, we understand you, we trigger your interests, so you can do great things. I also give expert interviews and uh, mentor students. And last but not least, I enjoy being around my family. Uh, my wife is a school teacher. We stay in Athens, Georgia, near Atlanta. Uh, my that's, that's the next part. So he's working on it. The dad, I want to go there. I'm like, you got to earn your tuition. So we'll see where we go with that. Okay, so now, before we can talk about cybersecurity, folks, we need to talk a little bit about the technocentric reality that we are living. Do you agree that we are living in a highly technology-driven world? Yeah? Is there anyone in this audience who does not have a cell phone? You all don't have cell phones? Incredible, that's impressive. How many of you have cell phones? Can you raise your hands? How often do you check your cell phone? How often? Every 10 minutes, right? Okay, here is a challenge for you. Challenge. See if you cannot look at your cell phone for half a day. See if that's possible. Try half a day. Push it to a day. Yeah, question. You can, so he can, so you're going to lead it. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna set the example and the others will follow. Because while mobile phones are great, they distract you. There's research to suggest that exposure to devices for too long in, in great frequency hurts the development of the brain. So everything in moderation is good. Do not overdo it. And by the way, I'm guilty of the same I'm, I'm not practicing what I preach. I'm going to be very candid with you. And I look at my cell phones a lot, so does my son. But we all need to get better. We need to manage the use of technology. Just because technology is being thrust on us, doesn't mean we have to embrace it with glee without any precaution. So, there are lots of technologies out there, lots of tools out there. If I have to summarize what's going on in our world today, the way I'd like to summarize it, we are becoming a highly connected world. Do you, are, are you on social media? What is that? That is connected, right? Then, you know, you are connecting constantly. Um, maybe you are sharing files, you are transmitting files. You're doing all kinds of stuff to communicate, collaborate, publish. 
So we are in a highly connected world. We are also in a highly intelligent environment. Lots of artificial intelligence going on. Hey, watch this video. And after that, I have a question for you. All right. Watch it. It is a matter of time, not too many years, when you will be working alongside robots. You'll have robots as your peers, as your supervisors. I don't know if that's going to be a fun world, but that's going to be that's going to be a, a new reality. What do you think? Any reactions? Uh, so you stated how uh, we can collaborate with robots and uh, one of the increasing threats in the technological world is the fear of a technological singularity where robots and artificial intelligence has the potential to overtake and overcome humans and human existence. So what are your thoughts on that? You're exactly right. In fact, uh, machines are learning to learn. Previously, Robots would do exactly what you told them to. Now, after you teach them, they start learning. And then if they go out of your control, they can destroy this planet. They can cause complete destruction. So this technology or this area of research has to be managed. Very, very, and many of you will probably be playing in this field. When I say play, you'll be working in this area. Do you do robotics at school? Do you have robot, robotic conference? I'm sure you do. So it's a great experience. So do more of those assignments, participate in those competitions. It's very important to learn how to interact, how to program, how to um, understand these technologies that's coming out there. On the same vein of intelligence, we'll be seeing smart hospitals, smart cities. And what do we mean by smart? Smart means data travels very fast, there are no interruptions, there are sensors everywhere, who can predict what you want before you want it gets to you. That's what smart is all about, intelligence. And more and more of that is happening. Now this you might find find this particular video fun, so let's watch this one. Anything outstanding or can we wrap up? Uh hey Susan. Um Uh, hey Susan, um, I wanted to talk to you about a problem we're having with the end of something. Let's talk after. Thanks everyone. Hey Mark, do you have a sec? Absolutely. I heard there's an issue with the hinge mechanism. I actually have two problem areas right here. Yeah, I should just uh, double check what's going on in the back, please. Hey, Quan, how you doing? Did you see the hint that I sent to you that about?
How about that? What do you think? Is good? So, now that we watched that clip, I'd like to hear from one or two of you, what did you get out of it? What came to mind? What came to mind? I'm sorry? A little louder. Uh, we just saw in the video how uh, we can replace machines instead of humans. Like we don't need a human presence to uh, monitor our colleagues and our juniors. Uh, the machines can take our place. Exactly. Very, very well said. So essentially what's happening folks is location and yet remotely you can be at multiple locations communicating, collaborating. In other words, you could really operate in a global environment without being at every possible country or every possible region. So that's, that's uh, one of the key messages. Let's watch this one as well, if you have, if you have the clip.
So you have to develop yourself, you have to work hard. Now I said play hard, right? I told you all. But that doesn't mean I, I say I don't work hard. You have to work hard as well. Because unless you pick up the skills, you cannot, cannot participate in this, this new technocentric reality the way you need to, the way you should. So without driving it or without being driven, no humans in the vehicle. Who's comfortable? Anybody? Quite a few of you all? Okay, good. The others are wondering what? What do you mean? That's possible? Yes, it's possible. It's, it's coming. Autonomous vehicles. That day may not be far, far when people will stop owning cars. They will just come out of their house and there will be a car that shows up, autonomous, and you, 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 you just uh, get in the car, the car senses where you need to go, takes you there, drops you up and moves on. And there will be a set number of cars, so in other words, you're not dealing with too much, too many cars on the roads and thereby hurting the infrastructure. So that's, that's coming. Proactive healthcare. For people who are elderly, who are unable to go to hospitals, now the technology is there where from home they can send information on their, you know, uh, medical state to their care providers and they can get treated. So there's more proactive healthcare related technologies coming. This is interesting. How many of you want to be surgeons? Can you raise any surgeons out there? Okay. Surgery is going to be hugely influenced by technology. Surgeons will be wearing these augmented reality glasses and when they are looking at their patients, the, the area of the body where they need to operate will kind of show up. So technology will help the surgeons be more precise. Technology will also help patients understand what drugs do. Like when you take a medicine, do you really know what it is doing inside your body? No? Would you like to know? Yes. Now the technology is there that will show you when, the, when you pop that pill in, what happens next, what happens next. So that's how amazing technology can be. Good things about technology. It's going to help us understand our body, how we function, how we have to be careful about medicine, what it does to us, and so on and so forth. Yes, sir. Yes. Fantastic question. Uh, blame the surgeon. Always. You can't blame the technology, that's that. But it's a great question. But remember, when these technologies are introduced, um, there's always a backup, there's people watching over it, so they will never try it. And by the way, they are right now being used for training purposes. But when it comes to real surgery, they will use it um, in a gradual, incremental. Like these days, many, many surgeries are being done with laser, te laser technology, right? So, and, but that doesn't happen overnight, it happened over a period of time. That's how it will evolve, but it's a great question. And I'm glad you are thinking like that. When you're watching these slides, when you're hearing me speak, I'm sure questions are coming to you. I want you to write them down and I want you to ask me because that's when it's fun. I want to know what you're thinking and what you feel might be the way to see. Gene editing. Now folks, this is important stuff, I promise you. I know it's hard to uh, hear someone speak for this long, but you know, why do I say gene editing is very important? There's a tool available now that allows us to edit genes. Because by editing genes, you can cure a lot of terminal illnesses. By editing genes, you can change behavior. So just for fun, if I said, okay, I want all these boys here who will behave exactly the way I want them to. I can go into your gene pool and change some of the structures and achieve the desired behavior. Now that's not, not happening, but theoretically it's possible. And scientists are hard at work. So the mystery to how we live and how we operate, why we get diseases, some of the mysteries will be solved when you get into the field of genetics. And in genetics, you will get to use <coughs> tools like this. So I hope some of you will find it interesting and will consider that as a future career. But before you get there, better do well in your science classes. Better do well in your math classes and the other classes. They're all important. 
All important. Yes. <laughs> Sir, gene editing is as promising as you portray to be while there are controversies about genetically modified uh, crops. There are controversies, controversies, and they are, you know, they are valid. Like for instance, would you like to have a duplicate of yourself? Right? You wouldn't, right? But your mom might get frustrated with you and say, you know what, I'm getting tired of your behavior, I'm going to create another one who behaves exactly the way I want him to behave. And now if I like him more, then I might just get rid of him. Right? Not happen. But, remember, when innovations happen, the innovators innovate. They are excited by the possibilities, by the prospects. Are there a lot of people on show printing? I know, I know you have, I'm not surprised. You, what can you print with two-dimensional printers? You can print clothes, you can print gloves, you can print models, prototypes, you can print cakes, right? You can print buildings, does that make sense? Print structures, it's transforming the way we manufacture. It's making manufacturing way more precise, way more customized. Not in the not so distant future, you won't be going outside looking for a cricket bat. You'll print a cricket bat to your specification. There is another level, four-dimensional printing, where the scientists are talking about building intelligence into inanimate objects like bricks. If they build intelligence into bricks, bricks will not, um, over a period of time, they will not. They're trying to create self-restoration systems with the inanimate objects like chairs, like walls, like other, other stuff. That's how interesting research is. And I hope many of you pursue that as a career in the years to come. The virtual office, let's see if we can watch this video. are creating startling changes in what it means to be for office. For better or worse, technology and globalization are creating startling changes in what it means to be on the job. Betsy Stark is tracking the new order of business and tonight begins our series, The Future of Work. Imagine a work world with no commute, no corporate headquarters, maybe no office in the physical world at all. For Bob Clavin, Janet Hoffman, and Joseph Jaffe, the future is already here. These days we do so much stuff by teleconferences and things. Um, Not even the CEO has an office with his name on the door. There's no corporate headquarters. If you need a workspace, you reserve it like a hotel room, checking in and out at a kiosk. Having a big desk is a sign of status with lots of family photos and, uh, you know, and, and carpeting that's fluffy and nice. And Earlier, you'll be able to work from anywhere. It's going to be a very ubiquitous kind of an environment. You don't have to be at a certain location to get certain things done. We will be so connected electronically. So those are the kinds of wonderful things that are in store for us. From wearables, you, there's going to be implantables. People will have chips embedded within them, which will not only inject medicine as required, but will also store important information. And some of this may, might be a little beyond you at the moment, but you will see it as you grow up, because it's coming in your lifetime. Then there's another area that's becoming very popular, that is big data analytics. All this stuff with the robots would not be possible if lots and lots of data could not be analyzed. That's why math skills are so important, folks. Very important. So learn your math well, because it's gonna pay off. So that's what you will need to do well in the reality that awaits you. Uh, and then finally, there is cloud computing. I'm sure you know, we are using Google, we are using all kinds of internet services, that they're all cloud-based, cloud-driven. So that's the new reality. We cannot store everything on our devices physically. We have to share, and you share through clouds. So while these are all great things, let me ask you, what's, what are the negatives of this technocentric reality? Before I share with you my set of negatives, what is one negative of this highly technocentric world that we live in? So people will become lazy. 
People can be on, become lazy. Very good. Excellent point. Excellent point. What else can happen? And uh, my husband joined, and that's how I met him. And that's uh, the middle of my life. So he told that uh, scientists are looking forward for 4D printing. So, so uh, if 4D printing comes, so then if scientists want to destroy something, so that machine will be able to restore itself. So, so it will not be destroyed. It's a great threat to security. Like anyone can control us from anywhere. Be it corporate the houses or like uh, our security will be at stake. Exactly. Like for instance, if you have a cell phone and if your cell phone is turned off, you're right? Okay. Um, Sir, uh, you, told, uh, you told us about so many different technologies here. Yes. But uh, what is the security of uh, these devices? Is there any security for them? Yes, fantastic question. And that is leads me to what I was wanting. We are becoming more very connected electronically. We are having machine to machine out to you shortly. If you promise. I'm so glad that you are engaging with me. I love this. We will have time for many more questions. I'd rather answer your question than go through my spiel, but I still want to cover a few things. So if you would be patient, uh, we will take all your questions, okay? So if I can have your attention again. So we are in a highly connected world with lots and lots of connectivity, but the more connected you are, the easier it is to send across a virus. You know what a virus is, right? It's basically a, a piece of code that can go through electronically and destroy stuff. So what do intruders do? The intruders can go and look at your information, the intruders can go and alter your information, destroy information, do all kinds of bad things, sabotage systems. And you know what? It's kind of interesting. I'm talking about cybersecurity and the challenges of cybersecurity. Because my wife and my daughter were supposed to take a flight from Atlanta to join us here in India. And last night she called me to say, they are in the airport, there is no power. Period. No power. Guess what happens when there is no power at the airport? Nothing functions. No flights can come in, no flights can be cleared, no flights can take off. People are in, sitting in darkness. When you are, when you, in the evening when you go home, just Google Atlanta airport and you will see an airport outage. And you will read and you will see pictures. You will see pictures like this. Where if you, if you don't have electricity, we are rendered helpless. Just imagine. None of this will work if you didn't have electricity. And the intruders are in a position to compromise our systems and to turn things off. Switch things off and then they can watch the fun as people kind of suffer. So my, for all you know, my wife and my daughter may not be able to make the trip because, and I'm not sure what caused it, but I'm just saying that's a possibility. Water supply can get contaminated. You may lose access to emergency services. You may lose access to funds in your bank. So while there are lots of good things about technology and connectivity, on the flip side, it can hurt you in many ways. But you know the reality of it is, you can't have it all your way. There is a price for convenience. As much as we like to shop online, we have to recognize that when we share our credit card information, somebody can access it. Now, as I share this information with you, I also have some advice for you. All of you are on the internet sharing stuff, right? Right? Fine. Remember, when you upload something, it's no longer in your control. Is that true? It's sitting on some server over which you have little control. So when you share something, ask yourself the question, can this come back to hurt me? If the answer is no, then fine, go ahead and share. If the answer is yes, then hold back. But it has to be used wisely. And one couldn't start any earlier than, at your age, probably even earlier. Do you agree with me? Yeah, yeah. Any other advice you have for your fellow peers to, in terms of making uh, responsible use of technology? Any other advice besides what I said? I try to keep it simple, didn't want to get into too much detail. 
Uh, another advice is when you get messages to sign on to this and sign on to that, do not. Be extra cautious because for all you know they are taking you to a certain website and they want your information and then they'll use it. It happened to me this morning. I got an I got a message on LinkedIn saying, hey, this company wants to recruit you as a consultant. Why don't you click on this link? And I checked things out and I realized that looked very, very suspicious. And I didn't want to share my information electronically. So you have to become way more aware. aware. And awareness will come through knowledge. Knowledge will come through experiments, doing stuff, reading, observing. So that's why it's very important to raise your level of awareness. It doesn't have to be that you have to be an engineer or a computer scientist. We all have to become technologically different. It's important. And that's why I'm reaching, I reach out to schools, volunteering my time, because I want to do my part to promote technology literacy. And I hope um, I'm having a difference here to, uh, this afternoon. Yes, question. So, uh, from how is your shift from being a BCom graduate to into this all this tech area? Great question. So, um, you know what? Um, one of the things I've done in my life is I've always liked to experiment. I, will, I like to reinvent myself. You, you understand the word reinvention? You don't have to be the same thing forever. You can start off in science, and then I got curious about business. I pursued business, then. At that point in time, technology didn't exist the way it exists now. So when I was completing my MBA, then the internet was coming along and I got curious and I said I want to learn about technology. Then I jumped into it. So I like to try new things. I like to experiment. It's fun. It's hard because you're always kind of trying to play catch up. But at the end, it pays off. And remember, all disciplines are connected. There is connection between music and technology. There's connection between history and technology. What's the connection between history and technology? Quick response. Anybody? Anybody? Yes. So, yes. So we can use new technology to <clears throat> sort of uncover the hidden reality of what we haven't discovered as of yet in human history, like uh, the time when we did not have written records. Can, uh, can uh, change the wrong things that were made in the technology in history and make new, better, uh, better experiences. Fantastic. Both are excellent responses. There's one more coming up. Yes? Great, great responses. Yes? Today's technology, today's technology will be tomorrow's history. Right. Wow. Fabulous. What a, what a, what a one-liner. Today's technology will be tomorrow's Give them a round of applause. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, you know you you study history because you know what the past is all about, what mistakes were made, what mistakes should not be repeated. So just like you study history in general, you study history of technology, you study how computers evolved, how chips evolved, how artificial intelligence evolved. Unless you know the past, you cannot do a good job in the future. So don't study history just from a standpoint of cramming dates and remembering timelines. Study history from a standpoint of what I need to know when I was not around, when I wasn't born, that's going to help me create a better reality when I grow up. So all subjects are important. That's the message here. No subject is any less important. So whatever you are studying, study with diligence and pursue excellence, always. So, so yes. anything in history, the excavations that are going on yes. throughout the world, yes. that is very important and that also this technology helps in that. Yes. So uh, excavations connected to technology, very that true. is very important and the excavations that are going to take place, that also connecting the past to the present. Fantastic. She's so right. So technology is enabling history. And that is so correct. The technology is enabling history. Okay. So I come to the last
last segment of my talk. I promise you, it's not going to be much longer. Be a little time. Last segment. So I really appreciate your patience. You guys have been great. Such so factors. And you will raise your hand as I read them out to you. The first one. Be creative. How many of you are creative? Raise your hands. What about the others? I want to see all hands raised. And you know why? Because if you haven't already, every day, every day, you must, must work on your creative skills. Think out of the box. Think of something that you would like to bring in to help us do great things. And these questions are coming to you as soon as I'm done. So being creative is very, very important. Develop your creative thinking skills. Artificial intelligence wouldn't have happened, but for these people, before them, they didn't exist. But these people have a visionary vision, and they made it happen. And I see in you people who will create even more amazing things. We just want one. How many of you will create more amazing things? Many, many, awesome. There is a guy by the name of Elon Musk. He's from South Africa. He's been doing great things. His vision is he wants to create a space colony because he feels the Earth is getting overpopulated and he wants to ship us to space. He wants to create a new civilization. Whether you like it or not, you have to give him credit for his vision and for his aggressive pursuit of that vision. And Elon Musk is one of those guys who's always trying new things. Um, the car company, exactly. So, and I see many, in many of you, or in all of you, people who will become like Elon Musk as you grow up. Make excellence a habit. It doesn't matter what you do, do it to the best of your abilities. No shortcuts. Do not accept anything less than the best of yourself. If you start now, you will be well set in the years to come. As I said earlier, every subject is important. They all connect. So it doesn't matter what you pursue. As long as you're pursuing with passion, you're having fun, and you're learning. I've been in your shoes. Learning is not all this fun, and you're like, oh, why do I have to do this? Learning will never hurt you. Learning always stays with you. As my grandmother would tell me, nobody can take away all that you have learned. You could be a great player, but you could lose strength in one of your arms and you could stop playing. Things can happen, but generally, you know, if you learn and if you're knowledgeable, it lasts you a lifetime and even more. Discipline. Very important. Ask your parents what it takes to do well in life. Focus, focus, discipline. That's why I said, when you are working, keep that iPhone or mobile phone away for a few minutes, few hours, try it. Test yourself. You guys like cricket? cricket? To be able to bat and score a century, what does it take? Give me one quick. Focus, concentration, right? And that relates to discipline. If you were to talk to people like Virat Kohli, talk to people like Sachin Tendulkar and all the up-and-comers, they will tell you that they have to be very disciplined, very meticulous, very prepared. Time is valuable. Every day that... But also develop yourself. Develop yourself. Take full advantage of the resources you have here. Again, to emphasize, find your passion. Does anybody know what he or she is passionate about here? What he wants to pursue? Yes? What do you want to pursue? Go for it. Yeah? Yeah, you're sure. Yeah? Space science. Space science. Fantastic. So, so one day you would like to be an astronaut, uh, a NASA astronaut, or the Jola Shuttle? No? Uh, so, interior design. 
I'm sorry? Interior design. Interior design. Fantastic. Put the mic is there. See if some of your peers can also share their passion. Let's see. Yeah. Aeronautical engineer. Fabulous. Next. Let's hear some more. So, so I want to be a medical scientist. What scientist? Medical. Wonderful. Genetic scientist. Fantastic. We have a bright future ahead. Yes. A few more. The software engineer. Software engineer. Wow. Automotive engineer. Automotive engineer. Very good. Very cool. Anybody else? Third musician. Musician. Okay. All right. I also want to leave you with the reality that you must be patriotic to your country. That is your duty. Very important, but also recognize we are citizens of this world. We are globally connected minds and develop yourself. Indians are doing exceedingly well globally. So will you. So it's very important to think big, think beyond a region, think globally and try to solve problems globally. And I want to, my last slide, have something that's on your website. It says, times change, values don't. And that's so true. And the people I could think of that symbolize, embody this statement is Mother Teresa and Mahatma Gandhi. And so you can be the greatest technocrat, the greatest software engineer, the greatest genetic scientist, but you also must have empathy. You must want to help, support, show compassion, show conviction. Those are the traits that sort of take you far. With that, I conclude my formal presentation. I know it's been a long one. You've been amazingly patient. So will you please give yourself a round of applause? And I think we have some time. Happy to take questions. Happy to take questions. Okay, it seems uh, it seems we had great inter. It not seems it, it is. We had great interaction. You had great questions. So we've done the question and answer during the presentation. So you probably exhausted your set of questions. But do remember to go back home and thank your parents and do great things in life. And once again, I appreciate the opportunity of talking with you. Thank you for your time and I wish you the very best in your future. God bless. With that, we come to the end of the day's program, which has indeed been an eye-opener for all of us. There are many new things which we saw in the videos. Voice quiet. On behalf of everybody present here, I thank you profusely, Dr. Chatterjee, for your gallant decision of visiting your school and educating the young generation about the kind of technology that awaits us, the digital trends, we saw the autonomous vehicles and many more things. The virtual office. There was never a dull moment and it was a very good interactive session with a very judicious blend of videos and verbal output. And I hope all the boys here will also take the lesson of reinventing themselves and not keeping stuck to one particular point. Thank you once again.
Okay, thank you. Boys remain seated and that's all. Now wait.